Hello and welcome to the masterclass about attaching hair pieces. I'm Baka from Baka Cosplay and I'm a special makeup artist cosplaying since 2005 and therefore someday eventually I became a wig maker and I'm selling wigs. So this video is also for my clients because then I send out wigs. Some of them are heavier than others, although I try to keep them as light as possible, but physics. For example, this one, of course, it is very, very light, but still the main weight is on this side. If you have further questions, just comment them. And on Instagram, I streamed once a month and there are many, many other informations, very detailed ones sometimes. Um, so feel free to check that out. And if you are on my page, on my homepage, you can check out my creations at my shop as well, if you want to. So yeah, um, let's get to it and enjoy. The tools and materials you will need to fixate your wig. For example, a velvet wig band, wig net and or wig cap. Very important, hair clips, a blow dryer, some hair products, a teasing brush or and tail comb, and then many different hair pins and needles, etc. For example, bobby pins. To fixate your hair on bare skin would be silicone bands, for example. And on my homepage, I sell skin adhesive kits that I will show also in this video. Ideally would be adhesive points that you sew in your wig or wig stripes in different sizes and shapes. These are the wig caps I give to my clients' commissions for free depending what they want to have and what color their wig is. So I also give some nets although they're less effective, but sometimes I also give those for free if uh, the client wants some. This is my personal clip box, very useful. These are my beloved pins, which I use constantly, and uh, I bend them as I need them. Then we have the dark bobby pins, normal bobby pins that you're used to. And depending what the client needs, I have different colors of clips. Another thing I give to my clients and I use constantly are these. I sell them as well in my shop. I look also on the profile of the client, how their hair is. These are very nice for short hair because uh, they have this shape here, like this. I don't know how to describe it, this wiggly back and forth. And for longer hair, I recommend using these because they entangle less easy in longer hair tiny ones for the baby hair. Another technique, let's say quick and dirty, are these velvet bandages. They will stick on your wig and they will stick on your hair. This is quite nice when you have a wig that is uh, quite voluminous, which often are the wigs that are heavy. I wouldn't use them if you have a wig that has to be close to the skin and look realistic. And they exist also with a lace parting here. So if you're using a front lace and the lace is here, it won't be as visible uh, when you're wearing the front lace. This is the least exciting chapter of my masterclasses, but it is the most important because you cannot enjoy your convention while your wig is pulling your head down and then the hairline comes, comes visible. So, and also it doesn't look good. So, it is so important when you do it smartly it is it is just a joy because you don't pin 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 and then it doesn't hold so for example for this week here i was screwing wheel horns which are leftovers of a friend and um, they're very heavy so the only thing i needed to screw this piece here underneath the wig i screwed them on it was sufficient to fixate this piece and the very heavy horns. I just needed one pin here and one pin here and it was holding perfectly. So if you position the pins in a smart way, you don't need like ton of them. It is so easy. Just think where your wig is pulling in what direction. So very often, obviously, it is pulling back. When your wig is pulling back, you want to fixate the needles in this direction so it doesn't fall. It is crucial that you comprehend the movement that your wig wants to follow. The main mistake I see is when people put their wigs on. I take this as an example, of course, you can, that works with every wig. 
Um, the worst these mistakes I see is on hard fronts. So when you have a wig with a hard front like this, it is very, very thick in the front. So the main mistakes I see is just doing this everywhere. And then people say, oh, I have so many pins in my wig and it doesn't hold. Yeah, because first, when you pin this in, imagine that this is a bobby pin. I take this because it's better to see it from far away. Um, you pin this in and the thickness of your wig cap does this. So you have maybe half a centimeter, not even that, of a tiny point in the front that should hold your wig on many places, but it is not enough. First, we have just tiny, tiny fluffy hair in the front, where there's nothing to attach on. And second, your bobby pins do this. So obviously it can't work. So what you can do first, you go further back and you attach inside of your wig. So for these wigs, for example, I go in between and attach in between the wig. So you do that. Second, you don't use bobby pins. I'm gonna show you something else that you can use. Postiche needles. And the other one are wig clips. So they do two different kinds of wig clips for longer and for shorter hair, different sizes and different colors. Postiche needles are gold. I think these are the only needles we should use concerning attaching wigs to a head. So they're just a piece of wire and then you go from the front to the back and this is how you can go through your wig, even the very thick and even skin tops with a little bit of work, you can get through that. So let's begin with longer hair. Um, I usually don't use these kind of nets, but it could be useful if you want to be very quick. So it is one of the steps. So you go and take it like this around your head and then up again. And with this movement, you assemble all the hair. So imagine that now oh, there's a longer hair here <laughs> and then you twist it and can pin it down again like this. So the hair is compressed nicely and you go in and you can pin it down like this. As you can see, I'm doing this, this movement and this is literally the only thing that you need to know. So either you pin in like this and then you do this movement every time or you can weft it through like this. So the tips are hidden. So, and if you feel the tips of the needles coming out, you bend them a little bit, and then you pull them out again, and then you can weft it if you want to, and pin in again. Um, if you want to put your wig off alone, I recommend bending a tiny bit the end of your hair needle, then you can feel it when you stroke over your head, you will feel that this is the pin that you then can pull out. People say, oh, I have so much hair. Yeah, but if your hair is fine, it's very, very fine hair, it, it doesn't matter because fine hair can be compressed underneath the wig. What I prefer to use are wig caps like these. Um, don't use tights or something because tights won't be as comfortable. So when you do, you, you take um, socks, for example, they're too small, they're going to give you a headache. If you take um, tights, um, the edge will be too thick. Even if you sew it on, sew it close, it will be too thick for your head. So you ask the model to take the wig cap like this and position it on the front. And pull it down like this. This is an old cap that I have used many times um, to demonstrate things. What you can do here now, of course, again, is pin it on. So of course, we have to free the ears. The plastic, yeah, the rubber of this mannequin, of course, is totally not nice to work with because the hair is very stiff. And it also, it is synthetic hair, so it does what it wants. What you want to do is the same as on the video I uh, did for the masterclass about uh, the head copies. So you want to push away the hair up and back. So, because when you go back alone, it, the hair will be sitting on your ear. You want to go up here and then you can fixate it here. Fixate it with hairspray or something, gel, whatever you prefer. And then come in these beautiful clips that, that's just perfect. So these are 
wig clips and you fixate the hair like this. And be careful that you spread the clips and the lines and all the materials that it is. It doesn't give you a headache and everything is positioned differently. I don't position this in the middle because this point is the roundest and it might hurt. And also this is maybe also where you have your parting. So there's less hair there. So don't go too close. It can be even here if you want to. You can go very far back if you want to. And for shorter wigs, for example, for this one, this will always stick up. So what you want to do is to pin this down, but you cannot pin something down without having something to pin onto. So don't forget to clip also in the back. This might hurt because the baby hair is very, very fine here. You have tiny hair, tiny hair here. Uh, so what you can do is use smaller ones like these and pin it down like this. So do this all around your head. This here should be glued up with products. This is just for demonstration. You understand that I mean hairspray and blow dry it and stuff. Blow drying is very important this step. So let's say that you don't have these clips, but what every cosplayer has are bobby pins. So what you can do, sliding bobby pins from the back to the front because of obvious reasons that I'm gonna explain to you. So you crisscross the pins like so. And by doing so, they're gonna hold each other nicely. So you construct like a base like this. To avoid any annoying pins sticking out, you can put on the wig cap afterwards. And it will push on your bobby pins like these. If you have long hair, of course, you can braid your hair. Um, maybe, you knew, maybe you know something like French braids that you glue the hair away with hairspray and then you braid it down. You can also put your hair to the side and then curl it on the side and pin it. And then you remove the pins in case you get a headache uh, when you have too many pins in your hair. They're pressing on your skin 24-7 if you, I mean, not 24-7, but if you have them on the whole day. Um, so whatever you do, don't do just a ponytail. Try to spread. The best would be cornrows because then you have perfect attachments all over your head and you can pin them on wherever you want. You can do that the day before and then in the next morning. It doesn't need to be pretty. It should, and it's good even you can do that with wet hair so they're very snug and it will be very entertaining afterwards. Your underwig hair will be floofy, beautifully floofy. You position the wig exactly where you want it to be afterwards. Be careful to also do the position on the sides as well, so that the ear part here, as you can see here, this is the ear part, rests exactly where you want it to be, because you won't be able to shift it afterwards, because if we pin something down, it will be pinned down. So position it where you want it to be, and then you pull down the back of your wig like this, and then it is positioned. So it is important that you just, and be sure to not just pull down the wig in the bag, not just putting it down, but positioning it down like this, because it might be that you have some hair clips and bobby pins, etc., etc., sticking out somewhere. So you don't pull them down, but you position the hair on top. Like really, it's, it's a stretchy mount. Now the wig is positioned correctly, but it has to be pinned down. I have these clips here underneath which take at least this part of the hair in many parts of the real hair that is underneath. What you need to do is take the postiche needles. I bent the end a little bit, then I round it up a little bit, and then I bent the other side again. So I have this shape like this. Underneath are the attachment points that are created with the pins. You can slide your hand underneath or you can take a picture before you put the wig on. Then you can see where the clips are. So what I do, I feel them like here. So I go through the wig with the postiche. You go through the hair like here. And you do this movement can bend the needle a little bit more so it doesn't stick out on the other side when you push it in. And then you go in between 
the scalp and the clip that you have underneath and put it in. So this side is not pinned, this side is pinned. So the more you put these clips here alongside the hairline, the more it will hold, obviously. It's better to put them in the right place in a smart way instead of just putting pins, 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 pins in. So if you assemble your wig, if you assemble your hair and then clip them in and then you go through it underneath with a bobby pin or postage needle, um, the wig is best in place. Of course, you can position one clip in the middle and on the sides. It depends how many you need and how heavy your wig is, how moving your wig is and how secure. Of course, it depends if you are doing stunts on stage or just running around on a convention or just do a quick selfie. Um, so the good thing is about this, these needles don't have anything on the, on the edge here. They are a little bit sharp, but not too sharp, but still sharp enough so that you can go through the mount of the wig and even the lace or maybe even the skin top. Again, search your clip here, go in between the wefts. And this area here often is way more dense than the other parts of the wig. So this is perfect that you can slip through with these through every lace and skin top and then you push it in like this. It is important that you also do the neck because see how you can look in the neck here. So you want also to have a pin in the neck here. If the wig does not need to be very close to the skin, when it's already proofy enough, um, you can use these velvet bandages. They exist in many different colors. The thing is, if you put them on, the wig will attach itself to this velvet and can't slip back because the inside of the wig is fabric. So you can imagine that if you have this here and it can't just slip in one side but not to the other because velvet has a direction. Just be careful that you put this on the right side. See, it needs to be in the right direction of the velvet. So um, imagine that this is the velvet like this, and then it is sewn to this bandage, you know, like this, it goes like this. And then of course you had to put in, you have to put it on your head like this. So the fibers go here and these like this, because you know, it's fabric. Um, so this, the wig sits on top and attaches itself to this velvet and the velvet attaches itself to your head and to your hair like this. This is how it works. Good thing is that these even exist with a lace part. So if you have a parting that is um, hand knotted or that is a front lace with a parting, you want to have this parting exactly there. So you can use the bandage, but on this part here, you don't see it. So if you are um, a last minuter and you want to be very quick, these are very useful to apply a wig very quickly. There are different techniques how to fixate wigs and hair pieces when you have no hair at all. This is not only for bald people. You can use that as well when you have an undercut, which is so short, like really, really, really very, very short like that and a floof on top um, because you still have to fixate your wig here on skin and on top as if it was longer-ish hair because this is already for wigs long enough. So the easiest are just these silicone ones, stretchy silicone loops. Test which holds better with the knobbly thing on top or the other way around. Of course, this side here is uh, less grippy for the wig, but also this knobbly part is less sweaty when you have the knobbly part on your skin. When I see it on the wood, it's already very snug. And uh, I saw videos also for people head banging. So this has more thickness than just using pins. So be aware of that. Of course, you can literally glue your hairpiece on. So these are wick 
stripes or strips as if it was double-sided tape. You put them on your skin and you press the, the wig. You can also use those when you don't want to use any adhesive with your front lace and not to ruin your front lace or the lace of your front lace. Glue your hair pieces to your skin if you really want to be sure and you might be sweating or uh, moving a lot. So this is a mattifying mastix. In this case, it's a TV mastix by Creolan and the remover. There are many others that you can use. The negative thing about, for example, other glues like the um, like Prosaid, it is a polymer-based adhesive. So it is like as if you had chewing gum in your wig. So not nice because it never really dissolves. Mastix at least dissolves, uh, but Mastix dries out completely, so you have like a scratchy finish. And when you rip it off, you can't just glue it on again because it doesn't stay sticky like, for example, silicone glues. Good thing is that Mastix now exist mattifying, and there are different kinds of materials um, that you can glue with Mastix, and there are different kinds of Mastix as well. So if you want to check what is best, just read the description of your reseller. I'm a big fan of Creolan because they do that for 75 years and they know what they're doing, really doing. Um, and uh, the lace is easier to be cleaned when the glue can be dissolved. And uh, some of these glues are even um, lace refilling, so the lace is less visible. That exists as well, but it's very expensive and very high quality glue. What you want to do when you prepare a wig for gluing, it is super important to stick these inside of your wig first. So this is what I offer to my clients when they want to glue the wig on. These are professional adhesive points that you can sew in. Yeah. And then the glue is easily removed from these points. It's like a plastified uh, fabric. It's sewn in and then you glue these points strategically on and uh, your wig is protected and you don't um, spend so much material, not so much glue, uh, soaking in the mount of your wig. With this we have every attachment that I thought was most important to show to you. If you have more questions about wig styling, I still have all the Instagram streams about this and more. And on my homepage you have more creations and also my shop if you want to support me. And I hope you learned a lot. Good luck and see you next time.